I'm going to demonstrate the process of exchange of the dual cone, the internal locking screw, the bushing, taper sleeve, and the external locking screw. These are the instruments that are required to perform this process. It can be done in a clinic environment. It does not need a sterile technique. It doesn't involve any surgical intervention. This is not a surgical procedure. It can be done by a prosthetist or a clinician, such as a rehabilitation physician or a surgeon. So the instruments that are required are an Allen key, size three, for the small distractor, an Allen key size four for the larger distractor, an Allen key size five for the internal locking screw that is going to be replaced and for the distal locking screw, as well as sometimes the larger distractor has screws of such. The original internal locking screw requires an Allen key size four. You need a small ring for the dual cone. You need a large ring for the taper sleeve. So the first process, we take the connector and often you require an Allen key size five. Are you happy if I take it off? Ready? So counterclockwise, and we just pull it off. There you go. Now, the next step is to take the taper sleeve. You apply the large ring on the bushing or on the taper sleeve, you tighten the knob, and then you ask either the patient or your assistant to hold the large ring. In this case, we have a 6M6 Allen key, so we require another Allen key, which is M6. We go counterclockwise. Lift your leg up a little bit. Yeah. And that will take the distal locking screw. It is not unusual to have bad odor after removing the distal locking screw because the internal locking screw can collect some body fluid. So you can use some chlorhexidine with alcohol in order and some gauze with chlorhexidine to clean it up. After I remove the distal locking screw, we remove the internal locking screw and there will be some snap feeling. I use a larger lever arm for this procedure. Ready? And you can take the internal locking screw in a clockwise fashion. Now the internal locking screw is pulled. Just pull it off. Then the dual cone will be left without support. So in order to take the dual cone now, we need to put the distal locking screw back again. I put the distal locking screw back again. and then I remove the large ring. Now, you can see everything is back solid. The, what's holding everything together is the taper 
the more stapler between the dual cone and the implant. So in order to disengage that, we will need to use the new shaky. There is no internal locking screw inside the dual cone to hold it together. So in order to use the distractor, these distractors come in different sizes, depend on the size of the dual cone. I disengage the screws. You point the ring facing the implant and the curved edge facing out. As you can see, there is no interference with the patient body. The same thing we do with the distractor, the distal part of the distractor. We engage it on the taper sleeve. This process should be painless. The way I designed this, so the patient does not need to go into an operating theater to have this done. Then you have the big puller. And we engage it together. with these large bolts. On occasions, you have some play between the two components. So you might require to have some addition of half rings. Now, once we apply the distractor, then we start tightening the wedge against the small distractor and the distal distractor. You pre-warn the patient that there will be a snap feeling on occasions, but it should not be painful, okay? You do it gradually on each side in a balanced way. And you can see everything collapsed. And now you pull it gently and the dual cone is off. Okay, the implant is separated from the dual cone with this process. Okay, good. Now, replacing the dual cone, we need some alcohol. We just clean the taper. I mean, this dual cone and implant is very clean. There is no odor and it's very dry. I clean the inside of the implant. All of this is external, nothing involves the patient's skin. 
we insert the new dual cone then with gentle tap it will lock itself the more staper is locked okay then we use the small ring this small ring goes one way the writing should be on outside if you try to do it the other way it doesn't go because it's tapered and then you tighten the bolt hold it like that so in this patient's case the taper is on the side so you can see it vertical most of the time it's horizontal then we use the internal locking screw which takes size 5 allen key it's a 16 mil screw so it goes all the way in until it locks the prosthetists need to double check it and they need to tighten it later on with the des designated tension of 10 newton meters i then you can put your leg down i then put the the taper sleeve the taper sleeve has a small dimple which matches this lot on the dual cone and it goes only one way and again gentle tap and it locks and then the bushing goes on top and then the distal locking screw goes at the end you start with hand tight and then we use the big ring tighten the bolt of the ring and then this time with this screw it's a size 5 so we tighten that over until it's tight we undo the bolt the process is finished